All right, so step one on these bearing carriers is done. I machined uh, spots for both of these bearings to fit on either on either end. Now I decided to do two bearings on either end just for double the bearings, double the strength. I'm pretty sure like one of them would have been strong enough, but I really want to build this nice and strong, so I decided to double them up. It's pretty much the same how I built it on the CBR1000 project, except these bearings have an inch and a half inner diameter, and the bearings for the CBR1000 is inch and a quarter inner diameter. So it's, you know, a little bit, uh, we're using a little bit thicker material. So now I'll admit this part, it is definitely not light. It is, uh, I think I, I just weighed it. It's like over 14 pounds, and the machined portion on uh, on either end it is 0.435. So it doesn't need to be that thick a material. So I'm gonna put this back in the lathe and machine a lot of the outer diameter away to try and uh, try and lighten this thing up uh, just a bit. And I also just finished machining this, whatever the heck this thing's called. Basically, just fits on the end and has a spot for the live center to fit. So therefore I can machine this without, uh, without having any chatter. So, pretty much took uh, two days just to machine these two parts to this point, and I'm curious, I'm curious how much this thing weighs now that I took all that material off. So let's weigh, let's weigh the original one, which is 14 pounds, 14 ounces, so almost, almost 15 pounds. Now this one, hopefully it's a lot lighter. Wow, eight pounds, three ounces, so almost half of the original weight is that half? I think. Yeah, eight times two. So yeah, so almost almost half of the original weight of the original one, and only took only took about three hours to machine all that material off. Now I got to do it a second time. And this is all the metal shavings that came off of it. So yeah, that's a uh, it's a lot of metal. All right, and just like that, the second one is finished. Now we still need to add the mounts for these, but we can do that later. Right now, let's start. Uh, let's start working on making the axles for this thing. We need to cut these to length, whatever that length is. We need to figure that out, and then start machining these down to inch and a half diameter.
So, I wasn't planning on filming machining the second axle, but I just chucked this in the lathe and I noticed yeah, there's a this there's a pretty good bend in here somewhere right here. So, and unfortunately, I I don't have any more material like this that is this length and this diameter. This is the only other piece of material that I have that is this dimension. But I've been looking at this and I do believe that this is salvageable. Now, the the final dimension that I need this thing to be is 1.5 and the dimension that this thing is, it is 1.77. So we do have some material that we need to uh, take off of this and I do believe if I can put this between centers and then first machine this part relative to the live center end that is uh, that is on this side, then I flip it over, put this side in the chuck, put the other side in the live center, then I believe I will have enough material to still be able to get this part uh, out of this piece of round stock. So I, I, I believe so. I, I don't know. This does have a lot. I don't know how to measure that. How do you measure something? I get, no, I can put the, uh, I can do this. Here we go. Here we go. Let's try this. Oh, wow. That is a, uh, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. So, but I, I do believe that this is still salvageable. Maybe. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, this may still be salvageable. I'm not sure yet. Alright, I'm not going to bother showing machining this because it takes forever and I already showed it with the last one. So I just took the second pass on this and it's starting to clean up, uh, you know, I want to say one or two more passes and I totally get rid of, uh, totally get rid of this and I still have over 200 thou of uh, thickness that I need to remove. So yeah, I think I was able to save, save this piece. It didn't have that much of a bend in it, but uh, yeah, it just kind of made it a bit more challenged, a bit more of a challenge to, to do this, but I think I, think I saved it. Oh, whoopsies, I just, uh, I just crashed the lathe for the first time. Wasn't paying attention to where the headstock is relative to, or the tool post, the tool post relative to where the cutter is, and I just crashed the tool post into, uh, into the chuck, so, yeah, whoopsies. Didn't do, uh, didn't do that much damage luckily on the chuck but um yeah I'm, I'm used to having the cutter on uh this side of the tool post normally i run normally i use uh this cutter but because i was uh turning this and i couldn't get the carriage over enough because of the tailstock i uh switched over to this cutter and i forgot that i did that when i was doing the finishing pass on this right here so yeah that uh that just messed that up, unfortunately. Oh, I hate doing that. That is, uh, that's not good. Mmm, yeah, that's, uh, that is not good. So, I actually, I may weld this, because there's no way I'm leaving this. That is a, that is a trench, and this is 5 thou to final dimension. So, I'm gonna, let me knock this, uh, this giant you know, giant burr off and weld this and build this material back up and then I can uh, finish machining this just because there's, there's no way I'm leaving that. There's no way. Alright, welded all the way around here and hopefully I can just clean this up and bring this to final dimension and hopefully it'll clean up nicely and you won't be able to tell that anything is there. Yep, cleaned up beautifully. You'd never know that there was a giant trench of material taken out of right there. So, yeah, cleaned up. Cleaned up beautifully. Alright, just finished machining both of these axles to final dimension. Now, before we weld on that giant half-inch uh, plate 
that's that we're going to be putting the studs onto. So therefore, we're going to mount this to the rim of the tire. Before we do that, we first need to machine the keyways on this end, as well as uh, thread this portion for this giant one inch nut to thread onto. So therefore, it'll hold it all together. And the keyways, we need to machine four keyways on this end. They're going to be about that long or something like that. And obviously the keyways need to be perfectly spaced apart. And I do have a couple dividing heads that fit on my vertical mill, but this part is too long. I can't fit the uh, dividing head as well as this and the, uh, and the support in the mill that I have. My table's not long enough. So I do have a couple of these 5C collets and I machined this to perfect one inch, so therefore I can fit this uh, 5C collet on here. And I just bought this 5C collet block and we're gonna be using this to index all four keyways. So this chuck is just free floating on here because all, all it has to do is just, you know, get this thing level. So, and then this main, this chuck is what's actually holding this thing in place. All right, so now that we got the keyways as well as the threads put on here, next thing we need to do is we need to weld some plates that's gonna go on this end, so therefore we can mount the studs and everything and eventually mount these to the rims. Now, I just finished, just finished drawing this out. This is the shape that we need to cut out using our new ArcDroid plasma cutter. I'm gonna try to cut this out of half inch plate first, but I'm not sure if I can, I'm not sure if the plasma cutter I bought will be able to cut half inch plate, so if it can't do it, I do have some three eights.
slag on this thing is pretty intense. So I'm gonna cut a third one because the first one I cut, the plate moved for some reason. So I'm just gonna th I'm just cut another one. As you're welding, it just stops, and it just—it won't keep going until this, unless you mess with the speed. Yeah, this is what happens when you buy one of these cheap turntable, rotary table, welding fixture tape, rotary table. I forget what this thing's called, but uh, sometimes when you hit the pedal. It just, it won't keep going, and it's also, at any speed at which you can do in a, any actual normal welding, it can't go that slow, and sometimes it can, but then it just, it stops, like randomly halfway through your weld, and it just stops, and it can't, won't keep going, so, yeah, this thing's a piece of garbage, and I want to throw it away. Yeah, not really sure how much uh, strength this is going to add, but I'm um, doing it anyway.
Okay, so that's pretty much all the welding to this part. That took a, that took a little while. Now, I'm not sure how much uh, adding these gussets strengthened up this part, but I did it anyway because we kind of want all the strength we can get for this project. So, now, last thing we need to do, to do for this part is we need to put this back in the lathe and remachine this surface to true it up because it probably warped like crazy. And then this part is pretty much done. So these are pretty much done. Now there's only one more part we need to make for these hub assemblies. And then we're pretty much done. Uh, we need to make some hubs to mount these sprockets onto this end of these axles. And I machined two of these. All we have to do is bore an inch and a half hole through these machine four keyways, which is, uh, that's gonna take a little while to machine four of them. And we actually have to do eight because we have uh, two hubs we need to make. And then we can weld a plate on here. So therefore we can mount the sprocket onto here, something, something like that. So I bought this inch and a half reamer to get a much better finish on this part than I can get with the boring bar. And this thing came with an inch and a quarter shank. I don't have anything that can that can grab onto this on my tailstock. So I've actually had to do this before with these uh, giant reamers from uh, AccuSize. I actually just, I chuck it in the lathe and I actually turn this down a little. This is actually soft enough material to machine, I just turn it down to a diameter that my Jacob's chuck can grab onto, and uh, now I can use it in this in this lathe. I tried to find this with uh, with a Moore's Taper 2 shank, but I I found one, but it was almost twice the price of this thing. So I just I went with this one, but we just we just got to modify it a little bit to to get it to work. Yeah, that's the benefit of buying cheaper tools. I'm really surprised how easy that was to machine.
So, I really wanted to finish these in this video, but I just, I, I ran out of time. Uh, we still need to machine all four keyways in both of these hubs, which I bought a bigger, bro I, I bought a bigger, instead of using quarter inch keyways, I'm going to be using five sixteenths, just because we're upgrading everything. They're a little bit, going to be a little bit bigger keyways. And we also need to weld the plates on here to mount the sprockets, machine, all that stuff, finalize that. And we still need to make the plates to weld onto here to mount these to the swing arm. So unfortunately, we're going to have to finish these in the next video of this project. Now, the reason I'm building this, we basically, obviously I'm, I'm starting a new project. And that project is, I want to build another version of the CBR1000 project, except... This one's going to be slightly bigger, slightly beefier, and it's going to be two-seater and four-wheel drive. We're the same same suspension style and same you know driven style as the CBR1000 chain-driven trailing arm suspension with the secondary transmission with the CBR1000. Except this one's going to be four-wheel drive, so we're going to have a really long chain going from the jack shaft behind the seat all the way up to the front, which is going to be interesting. And it's going to be a two-seater project. And I bought bigger tires for this project. I bought some 32-inch tires for this project. That's why we're having to build these bigger and beefier. That's why we're going inch and a half instead of uh, instead of inch and a quarter uh, like we did for the CBR 1000 project. So we're starting a new big project. And uh, yeah, it's basically just going to be a version two of the CBR 1000 project two-seater, four-wheel drive, and slightly bigger, and obviously different different looking, different style of frame and all that kind of stuff. Now I gotta say, the ArcDroid Plasma Cutter definitely makes making parts like this, these plates that I made, a lot faster and a lot easier. I, I made these in like 25 minutes, versus uh, originally I would have had to cut them out with my angle grinder, which would have taken me hours to get that shape. So I gotta say that thing is super awesome, super cool. And again, links for that in the description below. It's definitely a really awesome piece of uh, piece of machinery. So definitely go check it out in the description below. So anyway, next video of this project, we get to finish these. And we also need to start working on the, the front drive for this project. I need to make a differential kind of, it's not gonna have a differential. I don't know what else to call it. Basically just a, uh, sprocket mount that has two bearings that CV axles can attach to. I already bought the CV axles. I bought some hubs we have to modify and we need to make some custom brake uh, discs for this project. So uh, that's going to be the next video of this project. But for now, I got to end this video here. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video.